Hello YouTube world, Mac Daddy 1911 May 1 here with the Shade Tree Survivalist. What does that look like to you ladies and gentlemen at first glance? If you said Humvee or Hummer, you would be correct. Except for one small problem. That baby is a, what is it, Dongfing? It's a Chinese made version of the Hummer. That, that's right ladies and gentlemen. That is a Chinese-made Humvee that is licensed-built um, by China from AM General, the manufacturer of the Humvee. So that right there should be an eye-opener, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? Let me show you some more photographs of that vehicle right there. Check those babies out. See the red star on the freaking door? See the digital camouflage coat? Looks just like U.S. military Humvees other than that red star and the uh, funky damn uh, pattern, the camouflage pattern. Those are command and control vehicles, ladies and gentlemen, for the People's Republic of China Army. Okay? So that's what I was telling you guys uh, in one, the, one of the videos where I was announcing this series. Okay, did you know that? All right, we all probably, all of us guys who watch these type of videos on YouTube probably saw the second uh, video, Red Dawn, the second movie, Red Dawn. Okay, and it was the North Koreans, and they were using Humvees in the, uh, on that, um, in that uh, movie. And uh, you're like, well, that's a freaking Humvee. It don't even look Chinese or North Korean. Well, uh, yes, it does. And there is your proof right there. But that ain't it. And that ain't all. Check it out. Digital camouflage pattern uniforms. I uh, don't know what the hell they were thinking about with the blue. But hey, makes better targets. Tempo Roger. But you can see. I don't think it's quite as big as the American made Hummer. And you got all these damn bullhorns under there to spout your goddamn pop communist uh, propaganda. <clears throat> but that looks like an American Humvee to me. What do y'all say, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, but it is not. All made in China. And of course, they've changed some of the, uh, some of the, uh, you know, some of the cosmetics and so forth of it. But there you go. That's the truck version of the Hummer. Okay. All right, different Humvee slash Hummer slash Chinese Ding Fong, I think's what the what they're calling this thing. And behind it are uh, looks like Scud B style missiles, um, intermediate range or short range uh, nuclear missiles that are also capable of carrying conventional warheads as well as chemical or biological, and they are on big massive transporters. So they're mobile, hard to track. If you will notice their uniforms, they look very similar to American woodland pattern camouflage. Let me zoom in a little bit more. Um, you know, when you zoom in, it's going to become grainy and so forth. But you can look at that. That looks very reminiscent of American helmets that they have on. The goggles are very reminiscent of American uh, military goggles. The uniforms, the, it looks like our old uh, woodland pattern camouflage. The camouflage on the vehicles look very similar to American camouflage in some ways. They don't have as much dark brown in there. That's that was one thing that separates it. But you see what I mean? The Chinese and the and the uh, the uh, Russians, they are world's worst about copying the looks of some of our vehicles. Okay. Um, but they make them dirt simple and very reliable, very durable. I know the Russians do not. The Chinese, hell if I know. But I would imagine that they know their business, okay? Any, any culture that can build the Great Wall of China um, and uh, so many of the uh, things that they have built in the recent history, you should not ever discount them, okay? And look at this missile transporter right here. It's huge, and it has four doors, so that means it carries all its crew in this uh, the cavitous damn thing, but that ain't it, and that is not all, ladies and gentlemen. Check out these jokers. Knee pads, 
bullpup rifle, one with an RPG slung over his right shoulder, right here. This guy's got spare rockets, okay? Um, there you go, okay? This looks like he's got a vest on, but I'm not sure. It could be just the jacket on. It's tightly fitted. Backpacks, okay? Look at the helmets again. Don't those look like American Kevlar helmets? Now, this guy's helmet's so damn big on his head, that could be a, a old-style German helmet from uh, World War II. But you see what I'm saying? They will not be pushovers. All of them have safety glass or goggles. They're all yellow-tinted. And uh, this is an official Chinese, okay, photograph from their news services. All right, here's some more of their infantry. They have the old-style carriers. Uh, magazine pouches on their chest uh, that we copied with our vest so uh, you can't knock them um, These look like they may be uh, a National Guards type. They have the uh, Woodlands uh, type camouflage um, The uh, caption that I found said these were Chinese troops. I don't know for 100% for sure but uh, yeah, you know they're not going to be pushovers, folks. They're going to be tough fighters. We need to understand what they look like so when they come here, we can kill every last one of them. Temple Roger. Yeah, here's an NCO just chewing that ass. You better straighten up that line. I'm going to beat the hell out of y'all. Again, we have their digital camouflage, their bullpup rifles. We have the arm flash on this guy here, and we have a flash on this guy's arm here, bright red. And yes... So they look like automatons, you know. Uh, reminds me of the Clone Wars on Star Wars. What do you guys say? But uh, check it out. They all have gloves. They have the big, thick plastic pieces over the knuckles like your, uh, like your work gloves you see here in the United States. The mechanics and all. See, that's the thing. We've, uh, we are sending all our technology over there for them to build it. This hat. This hat on this guy's head is a U.S. Army hat, okay? That is a U.S. Army cover. That is what the hell that is. That is a Kevlar helmet. Now, I don't know if we send our helmets over there to have them made or not. It doesn't matter. They've already copied the damn thing. The digital idea, the, the idea of digital camouflage, they stole that flat out. Maybe not the pattern, but yeah. We're, we're spending all the money to uh, develop all this crap, and they're just stealing the hell out of left and right, because you bet a good portion of the clothing we buy is made in freaking China, okay? And they're using all our technology, all of our, uh, um, to, um, all of our ideas they'll be using against us. Y'all need to remember that. I do believe, if I'm not mistaken, that these are Chinese Marines. Okay. You can check out that is their digital camouflage. Uh, one pattern of it. Okay. These guys have vests. They have pouches. They're using their little tiny bullpup. It's got iron sights on this particular model. Okay. Again, look at the helmet. The helmet looks very similar to the U.S. military's Kevlar. Okay, this guy looks like he's about to go to sleep. Everybody else is pretty much paying attention. This dude here, he's like, I don't know, man. I don't really want to be here. It's a good idea, dude. You need to go home. Relax. You don't need to fight. Okay. But, uh, yeah, this is what another one of their camouflage looked like. They're going to the digital pattern, and, you know, they're following our lead, basically. They're learning from us. We're... we're Wearing ourselves out around the world fighting every damn body and his brother, but that is practical experience. Okay, they are learning from us. Okay, this is a Type 95 rifle. I think this is their Mark II or III version. It has the integrated uh, grenade launcher. You can see how seamlessly it is built into it. Um, they have a, uh, a, a sight that's more reminiscent of a, uh, a, a Russian scope, and uh, it's the bullpup. It has, it looks like a plastic magazine, okay, and this guy has a thigh holster, okay, and his is a solid, rub, uh, solid band instead of straps. I cannot tell what style that is, but it is a retention holster, 
Okay, and this is their stupid blue and uh, gray and uh, a dark green camouflage. And the guy has a vest. Uh, he has tactical, fancy tactical gloves and so forth. Um, the camouflage pattern is ridiculous. I mean, even the style of the sleeves and all. I mean, they. It's, it, I'm telling you, they stealing, they stealing everything from us. <laughs> They're using our own damn technology against us. It's ridiculous. Okay, so this guy has Kevlar body armor on. Again, Chinese. You can see this, the uh, shoulder patch. He has a night vision scope mounted to this one. He has a flashlight mounted to the barrel. And uh, instead of a bayonet lug type deal, it's got two clamps for the barrel. And he's got, looks like a little fancy grip right ahead of the trigger guard. That's, uh, that's way back there. And really, I think that would be ridiculous. But uh, single point sling, okay, molly pattern on the body armor again it's digital camouflage this is a this is more reminiscent of the earlier ones with a black uh uniform the pockets on the pants are obviously from the american bdus the pouches on the shoulders that looks like what would be on the jacket it looks ridiculous but hey whatever cranks you down tractor again it's got gloves on that will protect his hands and his fingers and uh yeah they're using our own development, our technology against us, and we're giving it to them. Uh, every time we send some crap over there to be manufactured, we're giving them. They don't are not paying any of the development costs. They're just manufacturing it on one end of the building for us and whoever, and the other end of the building, they send it to the damn army. You see what I'm saying? Ridiculous. Okay, this is the Chinese Type 95 bullpup rifle. This one has the carrying handle on it. It has an ACOG type sight. It has a, uh, looks like either a 30 or 40 millimeter grenade launcher. LED battle light right here. Okay. All right, this guy's got a tactical vest on. It looks like an El Cheapo version, but hey, if it works, it works. Okay. As far as I know, they are not exporting this baby overseas, so who knows? Um, some of the reviews that I've been able to find were really, really piss poorly written, and they say it was a piece of junk, but that could be misinformation also, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, and this is probably the most modern uh, camouflage and combat unit, or combat infantry uh, photo I have of their infantry. And uh, this camouflage has a lot of black and gray in it, a little bit of green, so it would be for arid terrain in their part of the world. Remember, there is a huge desert in northwestern part of China, and there's also a large Muslim population um, that they have suppressed for many, many years. But this guy has a vest on, he has a backpack, a bedroll, um, external pouches, canteens, knee pads, elbow pads, Kevlar helmet, goggles safety glasses um and yeah overall it looks just like they just copied american equipment and put their own camouflage pattern to it and fairly modern boots i have no idea what army this fellow on the right he looks like he's possibly from the middle east darker skin simply because of the sun um no racial slur intended um and a chinese soldier in his uh, digital camouflage and his uh, Type 95 rifle with the grenade launcher attached. And you can see the muzzle brake on the very left there of another type of rifle. And I have no idea what it could be. But there you go. Just another example of their uh, the uh, different camouflage schemes of Chinese infantry. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here's a long barrel version and a short barrel version of their Type 95 rifle. The bullpup series um, looks to me like this is probably your safe and your selector switch for uh, if it's fully auto or not. This releases the magazine. This little latch here. This is how you cock the thing to cycle the uh, action and so forth. And then you have a carrying handrail with your sights built in. And then of course, like on this rifle here, you have uh, optical sight plus a short barrel, very short. Uh, version of the uh, grenade launcher with its sighting system right here also so very compact weapon uh, ugly as homemade hell but it may be very effective 
I wouldn't want to be shooting a damn thing, but they that's just me. You know what I'm saying there, Tenfold Roger? Okay, here's the uh, another photo of another version of the Type 95. And it has a bayonet that is a, basically a rip-off of our American uh, bayonet. Um, God bless America, these some guns, they just copy every damn thing. <coughs> Different type of grenade launcher, much bigger, heavier looking. This one has a sight, and you can see it also has a, uh, a cover that can snap down off of to protect the, uh, the, um, the optics glass. The bayonet scabbard is also a wire cutter, just like the, I think it's the M9, American M9 bayonet. That damn thing looks like it's almost a co uh, 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 exact copy of it to a degree. Um, these some bitches just can't get an original idea to save their damn life, I don't guess. And, of course, I can't read Chinese. But uh, here is a close-up drawing of their, uh, their combat site for their rifle. And it shows where the controls and so forth are at. It has an eyepiece so they can get close up on it. And uh, if it, it, you know, if it's intensifier, if it, uh, mag, um, you know, if it's battery operated crosshairs or whatever, the glow will not show up on their face and so forth. And so they had the big rubber eyepiece. Again, reminiscent of a Soviet era rifle, Russian rifle uh, sight. And this is the uh, piston system of that Type 95 rifle. It is a 5.8 by 42 millimeter assault rifle carbine. Um, they also have Picatinny rails on the damn thing. And uh, it says it's a QBZ-97 export model of the uh, Type 95. Um, so who knows, but um, go, again, I can't read Chinese and these are the only photos I could find in the limited amount of time I had before I decided to do the video. And right now we're dealing with infantry. So how about let's look at some of their vehicles that they are hauled into battle in. And this is the Chinese ZBD 2000 light tank. Um, probably a very upgraded PT-76 type weapon system if it's, uh, if it's not totally brand new. I don't, I don't think I have any full... Uh, uh, shots of it out of the water, but I'll keep looking to see what I can come up with um, For a lot of this information I've found military-today.com is a really good one That's where I found this picture and quite a few others, but uh, Yeah, they are nothing. They're not a joke. Okay. Uh, I'm not saying that they wouldn't be easy to knock out But you know that you have to take them seriously because they they are not a freaking joke folks. Okay, talking about their infantry, how about let's talk about some of the vehicles that would haul the infantry into battle. This is reminiscent of the Russian-era PT-76 uh, amphibious light tank, but this is the ZBD-04 uh, or the ZBD-97 Armored Infantry Fighting Combat Tracked Armored Vehicle. This is what the description is. Um... It has smoke projectors. It has a fairly decent, good-sized gun on the thern thing, um, and it is fully amphibious. And you damn right, that's that's one of the ways they would come ashore and whoop the peewacken out of whomever um, until you put a damn uh, law in, upside that some gun's butt. And here is another of the ZBD 04A and the ZBD 08 infantry fighting vehicle. Um, it has a rear main door like similar to a Bradley and uh, I mean yeah they've really put some money into developing their systems a hell of a lot better than they were and there's a lot of interchangeability with Russian vehicles but uh, they really really upgrade theirs and add new stuff um, and whether it would work in combat as well as they would think I, you know they got a development program i would imagine that's stringent or more stringent than the united states most countries do i mean you're not going to spend that kind of money on armored vehicles and then find out they're garbage um but again you have a different type of camouflage pattern here okay and um i don't know if this is from a, a fake explosion or the engine but uh, it looks like it's beyond the tank or the uh, armored personnel carrier but that's what this is, infantry fighting vehicle, like our Bradley. 
Okay, this here is a Chinese Type 97 infantry fighting vehicle. Also, uh, it's very similar to a Bradley. And um, you can see this thing's, I don't know, the, camo, the barrel of it's pretty much camouflage. You really can't see, but you see the wave vein here to keep the, uh, uh, the waves from breaking over the, uh, the driver's vision blocks and all and here's the driver. Hell, they got the damn hatch open. I cannot believe they got the hatch open while they're doing what they're doing. Um, but it sticks up out of the damn water quite a bit. It's, it's, uh, it can move right along. You can see all the water in the background being kicked up pretty damn good. It's a hell of a damn vehicle, no doubt about it. Let's go back. All right, that's the rear. You got one main hatch. And... Uh, I'm wondering if these open up and this is an uh, impeller system to uh, shoot that sucker along through. But this is the Type 97 IFV out of the water. Okay. And here's the Type 97 completely out of the water. So I do have one with the uh, tracks. And you can see we have six road wheels on it. A plane a hull on the side. Exhaust here. That's an exhaust pipe. Let me zoom in. Um, looks to me like you actually got two damn barrels on that damn thing. Um, you have a main barrel and then a smaller barrel. And they're both tied together. That's a weird combination. Do not know exactly what those are. Maybe the, uh, one's a fast-firing cannon and the other's a slower-firing cannon. Uh, large optics here. Optics here. Uh, no machine gun on this particular model, but... This is an infantry fighting vehicle. This would be, uh, they probably have hatches back here so the infantry can poke their heads up and their rifles out and shoot the PWAC and out of whomever. So there you go, Type 97 Infantry Fighting Vehicle of China. Okay, these uh, Chinese sun guns, I got 500 different versions of the same vehicles. This is a Type 89. Um, you know, it's just a hull and a small gun turret on it. it. Looks like it's just simply a machine gun and a tub, armored tub that the gunner would sit in without the major cannon off. So this is basically a personnel carrier versus an armored fighting vehicle. And that's what they're calling an APC armored personnel carrier. But this is a different type uh, and it's fully amphibious just like the other one. And I'll... Um, and speaking of the uh, Russian PT-76 amphib amphibious tank, here's another version of it. And that's a mighty big looking freaking cannon on that damn thing. So it may be a, even a 125 millimeter. Um, that's the thing. They, they, there are so many variants and they've used these same uh, vehicle types for so damn long. There's probably 50 different versions of them. But it's a light amphibious tank. And uh, um, I remember... A story about U.S. Special Forces Green Berets engaging one of these in one of the very few uh, uh, times where Americans fought uh, Viet Cong or v North Vietnamese tanks um, before we pulled out. And then the South Vietnamese found out the hard way they had plenty of freaking tanks. That the North Vietnamese had plenty of freaking tanks is what I should say. And I think this is called a ZBT-90. But it's basically a BTR-90. Um, this one has a multi-barrel Gatling gun in the turret. It has a Sager, I think that was the name of the uh, type of rocket, that is anti-tank rocket mounted to the left side of the turret. Um, fully amphibious. Uh, this model of vehicle has been manufactured by the Soviet Union for many, many years. They used it in Afghanistan where it got the shit shot out of it. Um, by their own RPGs that the Afghanis, the Mujahideen, had uh, received from various sources, including the good old U.S. of A., who uh, put the Russians in a hurt locker during that war. Um, but yes, that is a uh, reminiscent of their, their uh, primary personnel carrier, and I'm sitting here trying to find some information on that thing, but that is definitely a multi-barrel Gatling gun that is uh, mounted in the the turret of that thing here's another shot the greens and all are not standing out nearly as much this is probably more accurate uh, color scheme for a combat vehicle uh, front of it you can see there's two headlights embedded in it that have uh, steel uh, rods to protect them at the rear right rear whoops 
drop a daggum ink pen. Right here, you can see it has uh, impellers, propellers that are enclosed for propulsion. You can see the missile here. That's probably the uh, laser detector uh, on it, just like on their main battle tanks and so forth. And again, this one has a Gatlin style gun. It looks like the way these rods are running up, it may be a single barrel gun. I am not absolutely sure on that, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but there you go. Uh, infantry fighting vehicle slash uh, armored personnel carrier. Um, that's more like an in infantry fighting vehicle. It may not even have any infantry in that particular model. And there are several different ones that I have seen. Okay, this is another APC of theirs. It is a Type 92 APC. And you can see it, it uh, has a, this is probably a 20 or, or 30 millimeter uh, gun. And then they've got smaller machine gun mounted on this side. I can't really see the other side, but it's possible there's one on each side. Smoke grenade launchers and um, your know, exhaust pipe and so forth here. Three big fat rubber wheels. It's fully amphibious. And uh, you see the little hatches here, here, and here on the, both sides for the infantry to stand up and shoot back. It also has, uh, it's propeller driven. It has an impeller that uh, has a shield around it um, to drive it through the water. Um, so there you go. That's another type of APC they have. All right, ladies and gentlemen. You see one of these babies. You shoot this some gun and blow it to hell. Okay? Now this thing is called an anti, it a uh, AFT-10 anti-tank guided missile uh carrier okay i think that is probably wrong okay this is probably more along the lines of anti-aircraft not anti-tank but it's a possibility also as you can see it is the same uh chassis that they've used for their uh, uh ifv the uh, type 97 and the uh type 89 i think it was okay it's the same chassis but they've got a they've got a missile launcher system on it. Now I really seriously doubt you're gonna, you know, that's probably anti aircraft more than anti tank. But it's always a possibility. I may be incorrect on that. Um, but if you see it, shoot this some bitch, destroy it. Okay. And yes, those boxes are armored, so you're not gonna just hit one of them and blow it up that easy. Um, but these are fairly thin skinned vehicles. Um, yeah. Do that, and you will save a lot of airmen and or tankers their lives. You tend for Roger me, so bust a cap in that ass. Okay, this is a chap, type, or Chinese Type 09 Armor Personnel Carrier slash Camo. So this is for command and control. Okay, this vehicle here, if we were invaded, this son of a bitch right here, you would want to knock out. All right, this is where your the leadership is going to be at, near this bastard, okay? This will be uh, the command and control. And remember, the Chinese and the Russians are top-heavy, okay? They don't let individual lieutenants and sergeants make decisions, all right? Only the big bosses get to make the decisions. That's, therefore, they can't think. They're not as flexible as American troops, okay? This is basically the BTR series vehicle with a command and control uh deal on it. This is where all the big radios and uh, satellite communications and whatever else the case may be uh, are at. So these would be prime targets, just like shooting a general or a, a colonel or whatever the case may be, the lieutenant in charge of a platoon or a captain in charge of a company. You want to shoot their officers, their belt-fed or crew-served weapons and destroy their damn communications, okay? Remember the fog of war. When you cannot com communicate and you are uh, uh, the, the hierarchy, the uh, upper echelons won't give you permission to scratch your ass, or you can't scratch your ass without their permission, then you can really hurt them. Okay, all they've got to do, they, they'll continue doing exactly what they were commanded if they have no combo with the rear, even if they can't see the overall battlefield situation and getting their asses beat down. So that's why you want to destroy their command and their control. Um, hell, these damn things may be able to uh, guide missiles or any other, other things. There's just no damn telling what all of the Chinese have packed into these vehicles. Um, so yeah, 
destroy these. That's where the eggheads, the computer geeks, and the commo geeks, and your uh, your uh, colonels and light colonels and brigadier generals and so forth. That's where their command is going to be at. That's the reason you need to wipe these bastards out. If you see one of these, wipe that son of a bitch out. Tenfold Roger. These are not. These are not Humvees. Okay, this is, I, I don't know where they get this. Um, but these are basically lightly armored armored cars. And they have the big machine gun on top. Probably have some type of uh, ballistic armor. Protect against kinetic energy. You know, bullets, small caliber bullets and so forth. But they're not going to be, you know, they're not going to resist a tank round or anything like that. But it's probably about in the same range as an up-armored Humvee. But those are not Humvees. Matter of fact, it just says Chinese APC on the darn thing, but I, I don't know what model or type these are. And this thing here, model. but if you memorize that whole like a friggin' Jepard, uh of the what is the uh, one fifty two millimeter long range, and then very very devastating. Not going to have this boy a uh, meter times twenty one handgun that the, uh, but that's their sniper. But that's what they're. Here you go, the big boy. And this is probably a naval version. Uh, but this is the QJZ89 12.7 millimeter heavy machine gun. So it's basically their 50 cal. Um, you can see it's a archaic looking SOB, but I would imagine it will work and do the job. Looks like it has a sight on it. And. Uh, this is at their naval base at Stonecutters Island Naval Base in Hong Kong. And it is mounted on an adjustable tripod that has spades on it. So it could be used out uh, anywhere. You know, you got soil, it would dig right in after a few shots, I would imagine. Um, but yeah, that's a big, heavy freaking machine gun they got there. This is the QLZ 87 35 millimeter automatic grenade launcher. And it has an optical sight rubber shoulder pad it is fitted with a 15 round drum magazine and a smaller six round drum magazine alongside of it so it wouldn't take too many shots but check out that damn massive freaking muzzle brake that the camera's not even picking up shame on me there you go how about that so there's another infantry weapon that they have that would be pretty damn badass in a fight i promise you um it is building upon the Russian AGS-17 and development of the W87 export type. Um, so this one here is, it's not super new, mid-1990s, give or take, but there you go. Um, has a range of about 600 meters and weighs 20 kilograms with tripod-mounted heavy version. There's a Whopper. Okay, and this is a battalion-level PF. 98 rocket launcher and uh, it has a substantial digital fire control unit attached to it the sight system right here okay and it looks like it's mounted on a tripod yep yep it says it's mounted on a regular tripod it shoots a 120 millimeter rocket and it's an anti-tank rocket launcher now whether that damn thing would actually do anything against most western uh, tanks and so forth who knows